All right. In this video, I want to talk about how God works. Now, this picture here is a depiction of Paul on the road to Damascus to persecute Christians. And this is supposed to be God knocking him on his ass and converting him. Now, this story is very interesting. And it's very interesting for a lot of reasons. I think of Moses seeing the burning bush. You know, he's just going about doing his thing. And God speaks to him out of a burning bush. Right? Right? Or the bush not necessarily burning. The bush is on fire, but it's not burning. And there's a voice coming out of it talking to him. Right? That's very trippy, very strange. Right? But with Moses, you see that God came directly to him and was like, hey, I'm going to use you. Right? We see that again in the New Testament with Paul. Paul was not only not a Christian, but he was actually fighting against Christians, right? And he wasn't converted because the apostles preached the gospel onto him, or anybody else preaching the gospel onto him. He was converted because Jesus Christ himself came to him in a vision that actually was an event that took place that other people were witness to see. And God told him, I'm going to use you. Right? And God himself converted him. And what got me thinking about this is I was watching a, a TikTok video this morning. And this guy in India was talking about how he's doing his missionary work in India. And how he met a guy who was converted, basically, by Jesus himself. He could tell that there was something different about the guy when he introduced himself. And he asked him, just straight up, like, how did you meet Jesus? And he said that uh, he a, was a Hindu and worshipped uh I think the deity's name is Krishna or something like that, the destroyer. And he had never heard of Jesus or Christianity. And uh, he had some heart issues that he didn't realize that he had. And there was a, a night he was out walking and he felt this pain in his chest. And next thing you know, he knows that he's above his body, looking at his body on the street, and that these shadows are coming. These different shadows were, I guess they appear to be some kind of beings coming towards him. And then this bright light shows up, and there's a, a man there claiming to be Jesus and points at his body that's on the ground and says something about he is mine and then tells him I'm Jesus find me and next thing he knows he's waking up in the hospital where he had uh, surgery after somebody found him unconscious in the street and gave him CPR and the, they did a surgery on him that fixed some issues that was wrong with his heart. Which is interesting because that's what Jesus does to us all, right? He fixes the issue that's wrong with our heart. And that's what he did to this guy. Nobody came to him preaching him the gospel. Right? He didn't believe. Yet God grabbed him and said, I'm going to use you. And the scar that he had on his chest was that of a cross. Where they cut him open, which is very interesting in itself there. So, uh, he was, uh, after that, he was riding in the car with his uh, family there. 
and he there was a flyer up and there was little pamphlets and the pamphlet said find Jesus and that is what triggered him to uh, take a look and then led him to uh, learning about Jesus and now he he goes out in his country preaching the gospel I, thought, I just thought it was very interesting. That was very interesting because I never had anybody actually coming to me preaching the gospel. And because of this and my conversion, I think I see things differently than other Christians in this sense. And the sense that I don't care what the organized church is saying. I don't care what the priest and pastors are saying. I don't see them as an authority. I go directly to God and I listen to him. And that's one of the things I wanted to bring up about this is what we see with the, the story I just told you where this guy is is just going directly to God. Yes, he's learned he learned from a, a missionary as well, but he's just relying on God there. Same thing here with Paul, where he's converted, he learns a bit, but not from the apostles. And he's going around preaching the gospel for 14 years before he even meets the apostles. And when he finally meets them, they don't have to correct what he's saying. They agree that God is with him and the grace that he's been given. Right? They realize that he is the God, apostle to the uh, uncircumcised as they are the apostles to the circumcision. So, with that, you, you look to God and God's your final authority. Where the way I look at a lot of the Christians is that's not their mindset because a lot of them were converted because of somebody's preaching of the gospel. Right? So they end up having this connection and this relationship to the person who led them to Jesus. And they start relying on that person as their mediator. So they become their. their they put their trust in that man or even that woman. Or if it was from this church organization, they, they attach themselves to this church organization as that's their mediator between them and God. When in reality, that church organization, denomination, or the man or woman that led them to Jesus is just a sign that is pointing them to Jesus. And they need to go to Jesus themselves and then have that personal relationship with Jesus. They no longer need the church or the man or woman that led them to Jesus. Not saying that they just dismiss them and act as though they never existed, but they are not to put them as a mediator between them and Jesus. But I see Christians tend to do that. They'll put people in a uh, place of, uh, in a mediatorship, like I said, uh, most of the time you see this with uh, people who haven't even heard the gospel, such as Catholics and Orthodox and a lot of the uh, Protestant denominations who don't actually preach the gospel. They'll have like the Pope or the priest, their pastors as the mediator between them and God. And ultimately, since that individual is eventually going to die, the church itself, right? It's organization made up of the list of baptized members. Their little denomination is their mediator, and they, they're not going to go away from that because they, they believe that they are saved through that. Even the people who end up being part of uh, the organizations that are actually preaching the gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day, that he died for your past, present, and future. 
all the sins you have ever committed, are committing, and ever will commit, Jesus has paid for. And when you accept that by faith and that he rose again, you are born again. And you are given his perfect life in exchange for yours, which is in mortal and perfect life. And now, spiritually, not physically, obviously, you're born again and you're saved. And since these people have received this through some certain man or woman or a certain denomination, they have this connection with that, that person or organization now. And they make that person or denomination their mediator between them and God so that they don't really question that denomination. They don't question that man or woman who led them to Jesus. They figure they have to be right on all these things because they led me to Jesus, right? But that's not the truth, right? You know, there's denominations that preach the gospel, but they don't have 100% correct doctrine in everything they're teaching. A lot of times they're teaching things that aren't biblical, right? But they're still preaching the gospel. So yes, they can still end up leading you to Jesus so that your soul is saved by introducing you to Jesus. But that doesn't mean you don't question them, you stop thinking, and you just accept everything they say as if that organization or that man or woman is God. And... uh yeah, I just wanted to make this video uh, to bring up two points. One is about how God works, that there's something interesting in that there's people who have never had the gospel preached to them. They have never had somebody lead them to Jesus, yet Jesus grabs them anyway. And ends up using them. Whether it's through a near-death experience, through some kind of vision, through some other means, he gets through to them and shows them that they don't need a mediator and ends up using them. Right? So, it's kind of strange because, like the person I told you from India, he died. He died not even hearing the gospel, yet alone hearing the name of Jesus and believing in any of that. Yet, here we have God coming to him, not using the name Yeshua or the uh, Indian version of the name, something something like, uh, sounds kind of like Muslim, like Esu or Ishu or something like that. But came to him and used what we would call him in English, Jesus. Right? So that's uh, that's very interesting, right? Like they they didn't believe the gospel yet, God saved them or saved this individual with a near death experience without anybody preaching to him. Matter of fact, you can't necessarily say that he actually saved him there because he told them to find him, right? It's almost as if he was like, okay, nobody's giving the gospel to this area. I'm going to take you. I'm going to get you to find me. And then you're going to give everybody here the gospel. Right? Kind of like what he did with Paul. Like nobody's going out to the Gentiles. Well, I'm going to grab you and you're going to do it. Right? And he didn't grab somebody who was already a convert. He grabbed somebody who wasn't. Right? So it's just something to think about, like how God works and salvation and the gospel it is something to put together there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up is about how Jesus is the only mediator between God and man, between the Father and us. Not a church, whether you're thinking of some denomination or some building or some priest or pastor. They're not a mediator between us and God. They have a relationship with God, and we can learn from them just as they can learn from us. 
but they're not our mediator and we're not their mediator. So those are the two points I really wanted to bring up. God's interesting and he does things like this that uh, we need to think about. And because he does these things, we realize he is in direct relationship with us. He can come right to us. We can go right to him. And we need to have that faith and that trust. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching and take care.